Today, we are gonna talk about how I hired my first employee. What I did, why was I ready, what did I think about it, and we're gonna come away with a couple lessons, at least that I think is good to know when you go to hire your first employee or your 10th employee. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? My name is Jersey, and you are here. You are at WCR Nation. Thanks for listening or watching. Um, it's your first time here. Take a look around. We do have a couple shout outs to do. This week, I want to say what's up to Brandon Evans, Gold Window Cleaning, Oscar Ortiz, and Eric Minot. If I said that right. But anyway, what's going on, guys? They are some of the awesome, most elite people that I know. Some of the cool kids, so what's going on you guys uh i am a sales rep for window cleaning resource so if you want to throw some cheddar my way say what's up give me a high five basically make my day all you need to do is give me a call for your supplies 862-312-2026 or you can text me at that number that i just rattled off super quickly and tell me everything's in your cart and i can put that in too uh we just got a new system and things have been crazy but it's back up and running i hope you guys all like the new website it's windowcleaner.com. Go check it out. Uh, again, my number, 862-312-2026. Well, this week, like I said, we're going to be talking about how I hired my first employee. Now, if you're new to hiring or you've never hired at all, or you hired 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, 50, maybe there's 50 people employed right now at your uh, your company it doesn't matter. There's a lot of lessons that you've learned uh, that we've all learned in how to kind of make this easier and better. Now, with a full disclaimer, employees will always be the bane of your existence. Like hiring, firing, HR, like payroll even like that. Employees will always be the worst thing about your business every time. Unless you're so big that you have a department that just does that. Which is awesome if you do, but I don't. So employees suck. It's very, very hard to find people who give a rat's behind. Really. Even if they interview well, they end up showing up and they're just awful. You've known it. You've seen it. Why do you think a big reason is you don't work? Because all your coworkers that worked wherever you worked before you went to companies sucked. Not all of them. There's always good ones. There's always good ones. Don't let that hinder you. Growth involves having employees, especially if you're trying to scale. If you say, hey, I'm an owner-operator, I just dig doing my own thing. Cool, high five. Hopefully you still pick something out of this. Or reinstate the fact that you hate employees and you'll never have them. I don't know. But employees always suck. I always say employees are like dragging a big net. Like you've seen those guys that are catching fill-in-the-blanks in the ocean. They pull the net, they drop it, and there's just a whole bunch of crap in the net from walruses to you know things they just don't want garbage but then inside there there's good ones too and that is really what hiring is a b h always be hiring that actually came from michael mole if you remember who he is but the theory goes that if you always have a pool of candidates circulating even when things are going good You'll have those people still at your your kind of request when you need them. If you don't and you go a whole year and all of a sudden you need somebody yesterday because somebody quit and didn't give you notice because they're horrible. Now you always have to find somebody like now, today, in, instantly. And hiring is a whole process. So you want to be able to kind of calm yourself, you know, in the hiring and make things a little easier and potentially always have a pool of people. Now, if you don't hire somebody, it goes by a couple months, and you call them up and go, hey, we're hiring now, you know, we, we loved your application last time, I'd love to see you come in. And they go, oh man, sorry, I got another job. Well, of course, don't worry, This a lot of people are gonna get other jobs. They're, you found them being awesome, other people are gonna find them being awesome too. But there's other people who go, you know what, I got another job, and I don't dig it, and I really thought that'd be really fun, I was really disappointed when you didn't call me, let's do something right? So you have that option. It's always nice to be hiring. But in my company, I did my first job it was a commercial job. It was in the dead of winter. It was actually the coldest day of the year in Wisconsin that day. But I'm like, I told them that's what I got to do. That's my day. It's the first day of work. Like 
first job I ever got. And what it was was a uh, machine shop. So it was a billion degrees inside, and it was a billion degrees negative outside. I remember still to this day, that was like 13, 14 years ago. I don't even remember. I remember how hot and miserable I was because I was learning the craft. I was trying to figure it out. That job took me like five times longer than it ever did again. Um, But I was going from cold to hot and sweating my butt off because I was super prepared for the outside. I'm like, I'm going to be working outside. Man, I just got to I gotta wear, like, you know, long underwear. And, like, you know, I was in Wisconsin. It's cold. So uh, it was so hot. But I got done with the first job. I felt good. I had my little check, which was super little. Like, I made, like, $3 an hour. I was like, dude, this is – maybe this wasn't a great idea. At the time, I was still going part-time with it. So, But then later, I ended up making, like, 70 something dollars an hour because when you do things the right speed then you're bidding that everything you learn kind of falls into place but i did it for the first day and i had that check and it was a commercial project that my parents actually knew the owners too so for whatever reason i got paid right away so i had this check and it was like not big i got this check and i went back home and i happened to be hanging out with uh my brother uh well i stopped over at my mom's house to say thanks and my brother was there and he was with his friend. And uh, we're sitting there talking or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did this thing, you know, cool, you know, kind of bragging. And uh, his buddy was like, well, one of my friends, too. He's like, yeah, dude, this sounds awesome. I said, yeah, it's so fun, dude. You're like working outside, doing your own thing. Like nobody bugs you, kind of just do your own thing. Doing it by myself is boring. It's boring, though. I don't get to talk to anybody. It had taken me way longer than I thought. But I just like sat around man like i'm working a machine shop it's noisy i didn't talk to anybody for hours and uh he was talking to me he's like dude maybe i should uh start a window cleaning company ha 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 he guy's been out of work for a little while um i said or why don't you work for me work with me we'll do this he's like yeah let me know next time you got windows we'll do it so i called him i literally had an employee that quick now where i messed up in the beginning was which it was perfect for that whole, you know, that whole thing, the project or whatever. Um, it worked great. It was a great relationship. It was all of that. Um, and he's still a friend to this day. Actually, he flew down. We just hiked some Appalachian Trail like last year. Um, but I hired him as a buddy. So that meant me writing a check every Friday out of my checkbook, my personal checkbook. Like, hey, here you go. If at that time... Um, you know, he was considered an employee that wasn't the right way to do it. Obviously, I had to go through the right venues. But at the time where everything was gone, I ended up W-9ing him, which, or 1099ing, sorry, which basically meant he was a subcontractor and really technically maybe not, wasn't really the definition maybe of a subcontractor. But anyway, I would have done it way differently when I hired him. I would have had the paperwork done. I would have had all that. Having him be kind of my friend at the time, it kind of changed things. There's a lot of guys out there who pay, as they say, cash into the table. It's not the way to go. Not the way to go about it at all. So with that being said, when you hire your first person, you think it's time, you have to do it by the book. It's just you're laying the foundation for everything. So anyway, so I got him. Things are going great. We're picking things up. And then about uh, six months, not, not even couple months later maybe two months uh i went full time which in turn means he went full time basically we had enough work and i had a home show coming up and we just rocked out got enough work that first home show where we were just feet on the ground now it was spring we're up and running and that relationship worked for a very long time it really did until he had been going to school at the time graduated and then with that degree he ended up getting kind of his other his real job where he still works now and and left It was very amicable. He kind of um, took us two weeks. It was kind of the the whole thing that they should be done. But it was a friend. Now I didn't have an employee. So even though that was my first employee, it kind of was more of a like learning experience than actually having an employee. So I always figure my first employee is the one that is after after that. I'm trying to uh, (laughs) tear my phone off. Wrong button. It's just that kind of day. But (laughs) everything is stinging around me. 
Um, but with that all being said, um, my first employer was really the next guy off. And what I did was my first one, I said, hey, I am going to fill this guy's spot, but I need to hire somebody. What can I do? I went the Craigslist route. I went the Craigslist route. I found the first guy that said, yeah, what's going on? Like, I'd like to know more. I talked to him. He came in. I was like, dude, let's do it. I tried to do it the same way as like my friend. I kind of was like, oh yeah, let's just start. And it was the same kind of concept where he now, we kind of have moved into uh, the actual legal way to hire an employee. But it was just quick and simple and he ended up not working out super great. Uh, actually, that guy was a recovering addict, which I was like, oh, dude, I can give somebody a second chance. And things went awry. Actually, stole my work truck and a bunch of other stuff. But and it was just because I didn't screen well enough and I didn't have kind of everything in place. From there, I've had more horror stories, but I've had a lot of great stories. In fact, my business, if you don't know, uh, was sold a couple years back. And I'm in buyout, so I'm technically still the owner, but only for a short while left. The guy that owned, bought it was my operations at man. Offer, he was my operations manager, officer, whatever. And uh, he went in, and I offered it to him. And so, guy that I found, hired, found was one of the good ones. Actually, ended up buying my business. So there's a lot of pros that can come. I've had employees that lasted five and six years before they kind of moved on to something else. And uh, we did really well with employees, but they're always still just a little bit of a pain in the butt. A little bit of a uh, sucky time is, is having employees. But if you're by yourself right now and you're like, okay, well, that's neat. That's a cool story. That's how he got his first employee. But how do I take that and use that? Well, the time when you think you need an employee, and everybody doesn't have to get one right away because... I never but one job made all of the money myself. I always was sharing it with somebody else. Um, I was always paying somebody. You know, ever since then, I had employees. It's really nice to make your own money. When you make a dollar, you make a dollar. So you have to find out when you're ready for employees. And the big thing for you is when you're comfortable with it. But the big downside to that is you'll never be 100% comfortable. You always think maybe it's not the right time. But here's a theory on all of it. If you're working 40 hours a week doing what you're doing, cleaning, or close to, and this can be up or down, it, this is just some dummy myself like telling you what I think, right? But you can go and um, if you're working 40 hours a week, you're not having much time to get the rest of the stuff done, like the invoicing and the advertising and the, everything else is falling to the wayside because you're doing the cleaning. Now, I'll give you a weird kind of math equation for you to wrap your brain around this. If you're working and doing the window cleaning and you bring somebody in and they're making $10, the only amount of money that you're making by cleaning the window yourself is $10 because you're going to get the rest anyway. So say it's a $50 for even numbers, $50 job, $50 an hour you'd make. If you did it, you'd make 50. If they did it, your employee, you'd make 40. So regardless in both scenarios, you're still making the 40. The only thing that changes is the $10 or whatever you pay the person. That's it. So if you're paying somebody $10, is it worth your time? The guy or girl who knows the ins and outs of the business, the guy or girl who can get the work, who can grow the business, who can do the advertising, who can make the mailers and do all the other stuff, the brains of the operation, does it make sense for you to be working for $10 an hour? If it doesn't, then it's time for employees. Now again, those numbers are different. I'm just some guy, right? Do your research on it. But those are how it works out. You're more valuable out of the field than you are in the field. Anybody, and this is where I get the hate mail, but anybody can clean a window. Anybody can be trained to clean a window. Are they going to be as fast as you? No. Are they going to do it just like you? No. Are all your customers going to love them just as much as you? Maybe, but no, right? There's something about you that makes you you. I have to tell you, when you take that, that's you. You can still apply it on the phone if you're doing the estimates. If you're still doing in-person estimates, you can still apply it. But you find an operations officer to run everything who is good. Not you. You're not going to find somebody that's like you. But you find somebody that's good. Now, all of a sudden, they're the face. I've had people, like I said, I've had people walk up and like, oh, uh, 
I got the check for you here. Oh, I can take that. No, let me let me find Gary. That was our operations guy at the time. Okay, yeah, no, he's in the back. If you want to give that to him, that's cool. Like he didn't want to give him, he didn't even trust me with it. I own the company. <laughs> Gary worked for me. But I don't care. That's his job is to make him the face of the company. You find somebody like that, it removes all the doubts that you had in your head about why you think you need to be in the field, pulls it all out, and now allows you to expand and get more work. Now, here's the thing. If you got 40 hours a week and you give that to somebody to do those cleaning. Now, yes, there's training and everything. But they are now doing the 40 hours of we- uh, cleaning a week. You now have minimally... 40 hours a week that you get to do selling, advertising, new uh, uh, estimates. You get to do all of that. You can do SEO work. You can just do free postings. That was one thing I always did in my free time too is just posting my website, uh, posting on Craigslist, doing all the little things because sometimes you don't have the money, you have the time. Now you make the time. Now it is your job to make the extra work. You have 40 hours a week, you're in a tough spot. It is very hard to hire a second person because now you screw the first person out of 40 hours, you're giving them 20 hours. But what if you're selling like crazy? What if you're doing that? Well, now, as you introduce yourself back into the field at that time, because it's not right to hire the second person, now maybe 10 hours a week you're doing windows with this guy, which equates to double time on that, right? You're adding that, which is like just having 10 more hours of single man work. Maybe now it's 20. Once you get up or you're working a lot more, you pull yourself back out of the field. You look at hiring another person. Now, training is easier because now the person you have in place is going to train this person. Now, the structure is more simple because now this person who you had before is now a higher tier than the other guy. So you kind of create seniority, which makes people feel respected. And now you can pull yourself back out of the field. And now... You have two guys, again, for even numbers, say you were working 20 hours in the field back, splitting that back up. Now they still have, uh, what is that, uh, an extra 20 hours. So they still have 20 hours of weekly work to fill. That's your job. Your job now for eight hours is to get those guys work. That's it. That's your job. You're building the empire by creating your company. You're creating the work for these guys to do. That's your job now. Don't fire yourself, but clone yourself by doing all that. That's how this whole ball of employment starts. That's when you know when you're ready. If you're doing 12 hours of work right now a week, awesome. You're making great money. If you're doing, you know, uh, potentially the the normal price with 12 hours a week, I mean, you could literally be making $50,000 a year or more depending on how awesome you are at bidding, right? So you may be doing awesome. You may not need somebody. But if you have that, it's not time for an employee. It's just when you start getting to be too much to handle on your own is when you get an employee. But employees are not expensive in the realm of freeing you up. Your time is worth more than what you're paying them. So yes, you're losing a little bit. But now you have 40 hours a week to sell. Think of that. What could you do with 40 hours if you could sell for 40 hours? Where would your company be? Where would your company be if a year ago, if you guys have been in business long enough, if a year ago you went and you were not in the field and 40 hours a week for one full year you were selling? What? You would be huge. Maybe you are huge. Maybe you don't want to get huge. Doesn't matter. What I'm talking about is you would be farther along than where you are now, even if it's the health of your company. The health of your company still constitutes, if you got a guy doing the work and it's your job to make that company healthy because you don't need any more work in and you don't want to grow, awesome. But what you're going to do is find those crappy clients, the pitas, pain in the, mm, you're going to find the clients that are bid wrong, the ones you just don't want to do, the ones that are outside your area, the ones that are whatever. And you're going to call them and politely let them know you won't be servicing them anymore and that, you know, that's, it's not you, it's me, you know break up with them and find new clients that are healthier. So now all of a sudden, instead of this guy out there doing $50 an hour in work, he's now doing 75. He's now doing a hundred. Maybe he's doing a hundred max. And you go, you know what? We're really, really healthy right now. Maybe we do bring in another person. It's all up to you. It is your world, no matter how you do this. That's the cool part about this, but that's really employees. That's kind of 
the the introduction to employees. Hiring friends is kind of cool, but there's a weird dynamic. And I've hired probably four or so people that were my friends in real life. And they need to work. And I'm like, yeah, come work for me. Some did really, really well with it. Others um, had a little bit more hard of a time and it lasted you know, a couple weeks. And that's cool. Like the dynamic is super hard. I had one of my guys was six years. He stayed with me. He uh, knew him forever. Like I, I knew him forever and I was good friends with him. When we were at work, it was work. When we left work, it was, we're just buddies. Like it was a great dynamic. He understood it. I understood it. It worked very well. Some people can't do that. I don't work with my wife for that reason. She would, she would uh, not work well with me. She would, uh, you know, it would, it would be very hard to disconnect. And it is very easy for some people. Luke and Rihanna, a lot of the other ones. If you're listening, comment on YouTube and uh, let me know if you work with your spouse. But some people can do it and some people can't. So the friend thing, it's pretty hard. If you start a relationship as an employer... You start a relationship as an employer and you end a relationship as an employer. You can be friendly at work, but still understand that I'm the reason that you're working here and that when something needs to get done, you're not just like, ah, it's Jersey, whatever. He won't care. That's not, there's nothing worse than being more of a friend than a boss, right? You need a leader. So that's the hard part about hiring friends. Do it at your own risk. Um, Making hiring or make, Hiring has to make sense for you to do it, right? Like we talked about. Keep that in your mind. Another thing with hiring, when it makes sense, if you're hiring friends or you're not hiring friends, do it legally. Go and find a temp agency. If you haven't seen the episode on hiring, go back and search WCR Nation and search employees or hiring. I probably should have done my research to tell you the right name. But I talk about temp agencies. Man, temp agencies were the greatest thing ever. A temp agency, basically, you hire somebody, you came in the street and say, hey, how are you, John Smith? Uh, My name is Jersey, I'm here to do your interview. We do an interview, great, well, I had you start working with me, I'll do a day to test how you work in the field, great, I want to hire this guy on. I call up my temp agency, hello, Mr. Temp Agency, sir, I have a new employee starting. Okay, I'll be there at, uh, our time was uh, 8, I think, that he would show up uh, on the next day. All right, I'll be there 8 tomorrow morning, we'll get him signed up. The guy comes in. I'm like, hey, Tim, how are you? That was his name. He would take the guy into the uh, one of the other offices, and they'd sit down, and they'd fill all the paperwork out. You know, Social security numbers and hiring and uh, medical and dental and vision, and they have all of the benefits that come with that, plus workers' comp. So they sign them up for all the benefits, talk about what they're doing. All of a sudden, by 8.30, the guy comes out of the office, and he is a full hired employee with full benefits if he chose them. He is an employee, right? I'm running it through this agency, but he's my employee. Boom, it's legal. Everything's recorded. They take care of all that stuff. It's great to hire it through a temp agency like that. That makes things super easy. Now all of a sudden you have that employee who he's your employee. Now he is completely legal. You're not getting yourself in a bind. Yes, it costs you some more money. If you're wanting to know more about that, it was 37% for me at the time. Uh, it may vary depending on what company or service you run. 37%, that was workers' comp. That was all the um, benefits, like your end of the benefits, the co-pays or whatever, the uh, brain fart, you know. All of that's included. But on top of that, when they were all done, they got vacation days and sick time too with that, by the way. But with all that, when I went to hire the next guy, you know what I got to say? The most important thing to hiring somebody who is worth a dang is I would say, here's my position. We offer this amount per hour starting. Full benefits. Full benefits. Look at how many times, I mean, you have to be a certain someone to get a job with no benefits. Like I understand as an employer or as somebody who owns their business, it's very hard. I was lucky. My wife always worked. So that's where our benefits come from. But if you do not have benefits because of that, Get benefits sooner than later. I know it's expensive, but if something happens, you know, God forbid, then you're in a world of hurt, right? But as an employee, think about if you could work somewhere without benefits. It's all super hard. Super, super hard to do. So with that being said, you get a higher caliber of person. You get a larger caliber of person because you're offering full benefits. And if you and one of your competitors are hiring at the same time, 
even if they're like a buck more an hour, two bucks more an hour, whatever, they look at it and go, yeah, but this one's full benefits. Time off, vacation time. Who are you going to pick? Now you're sweetening the deal and you're making people want to work for you as opposed to the other way around. Here's an interesting theory. Now, this is not necessarily going to happen in your case. But think of the, 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 the term intern. Think of what an intern is. An intern means that your job, what you have applying for, you know, what you're putting out there, is so amazing, so interesting, and so awesome of a job that they're willing to not only do it for free, but they're to do anything that needs to be done just so they can say that they work there. That's what an intern is. Now, I know there's paid internships, but they don't get paid a lot, even if there are. But there's a lot of free internships, too. Imagine if you were, you know, whatever, in, in, in technology, but you could intern at Google. Their intern application, there are thousands of people who apply for interning at Google just so they could say they work there. Like, that's what you're trying to create. And not that that's what you can create as a little guy. But I had benefits, full benefits. I had the vacation time, time off. I had perks for meals. And we did um, uh, obviously paid in pl- uh, apparel. And we had a ping pong table. And we had shop parties. Like just things to create. Like it's so fun to work here that you're not looking. Again, you're selling yourself. If you could sell yourself or as a better place to work, you're going to get a better caliber of person to do the work. And that's really what we're looking for. Remember, we're having a big net out there. The more crap you have just means the closer you are to getting something awesome. Yeah. Anyway, higher. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, give me a review. I think uh, right now we're still five star. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, if you want to be in the conversation, go to um, YouTube and talk because that's where we have our conversation. I'd love to hear it. I love when guys post on there and just be like, hey, this is awesome. It actually helps the YouTube rankings too. So give us a thumbs up and comment. And most importantly, if you want to buy from me, if you want to say what's up, if you want to give me a little virtual high five by buying, it doesn't cost anymore. Uh, I make my chatter on the uh, side of being the one to sell it. So it doesn't cost you any more to do that. Big or little. I see orders come through all the time. And I'm like, oh, man. I just talked to that dude. I can't believe he ordered on his own. I do actually see that, but I don't really cry. But uh, give me a call uh, or shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. This week, you're going to get a code for 5% off. If you tell me, you have to order through me. Somebody tried to order online. I don't get credit for that, so you can't actually get the discount. But if you want that discount, you call me. Let me know the word this week is employees. Sure, why not? Employees. You say employees, you get 5% off anything you order, big or little. And it gives me credit. And it's like a virtual 5-5. And maybe you get a shout out next week. You never know. It's always awesome. But I do appreciate you guys listening, watching, and everything else. It really genuinely means the world to me. So thank you very much. And if you want to get a hashtag out there on Facebook or any of the social platforms, it is I am Nation. if you want to comment or write on anything. So thanks a lot, and until next week, go out there and be epic.